Okay, we're back. Uh, another edition of My Garage Game Room here. Uh, the last episode we sh took a quick glance around the room and uh, we started at this point, so we're back at this point. We're going to look at uh, uh, this gate time, being that's in the front of the row here. And uh, it's the last game we talked about in the other episode. And uh, for sure this game is in outstanding condition, all original condition. I'd just like to get a little close-up of it for those purists and people who really love original mint condition machines. This is definitely one for the books. This game is just in an astronomical condition like I said. I used to have another Valley Gay Time in my collection and I thought it was the best one I've ever seen but this one came up and I knew <laughs> that this was the best one I've ever seen. Even though the other Gay Time I had was really really comparable to this. It's that nice but uh, this 1954 bingo has uh, some some nice features on it. The magic pockets and the magic lines. These features allow the player to move the ball in this top row one through seven. You, you can move the ball back and forth across these numbers and uh, it changes your number position on the card. You can line up for bingo wins through uh, this magic pocket feature again which allows the player to move the ball across the top of the play field first row one through seven and they do this electrically by pressing these buttons here once the feature is lit so uh, very nice feature and the magic line feature is the other really nice feature in this 1954 bingo I mean mechanically and electrically these things are really smart and are very we're very ahead of our time back then. Uh, the magic lines allows the player to move the numbers up and down vertically on all of these vertical lines, all four of them. One, two, three, four vertical lines and the player can move the numbers up and down and place them in position for inline wins. So uh, the player does that from these knobs here in the front. As you can see, these knobs uh, are labeled first, second, third, and fourth line. And uh, now you understand a couple of the really nice features on this game. So uh, just think about it, 1954, uh, the... Uh, player had these options. Let me show you how that top row works. I'm just going to drop a nickel in and then shoot five balls out. Just to show you how that top ball, that, that top uh, first row works. Look at that. That's right. It passes the ball across the play field. And uh, it can do that forward and backwards. And it changes the number on the back card. You can put, bring the number anywhere you want with the magic pockets, depending upon, there's a, there's a magic pocket number. The magic pocket numbers are all in blue. All the other white numbers are just regular numbers. But uh, again, there's quite a few of them. There's seven of them. And uh, makes for a very interesting game where uh, you can actually manufacture uh, by pushing a button, you can move the ball internally in the play field. 
pretty neat. Uh, you can hear it clicking and clanking. It's going through its cycles in the back. A lot of uh, mechanical stepping units in there and electrical parts. So uh, extremely beautiful game. Condition-wise, like I said, it's a it's one of the best players out there in the bingo lineup from Bally. A lot of players love this game because you're are allowed to move the balls around on the top row and you can also move the numbers up and down. A very, very cool game. So, uh, as you can see, you can't hardly find any marks. I don't know if I even have any touch up on this game. I know I, I cleaned it really, really good with super clean and and then wax it with some butcher's wax that they use on the shuffle alleys. So uh, maybe one day we'll go back and we'll really get into the features. There's plenty of other features on this game, but for the first episode here of the Game Room Garage video, we're going to just touch on a few features and uh, move on to the next game, which is uh, Silver Sails. The Silver Sails is in really nice shape. Not as as good as the uh, Gay Time, but uh, still in incredible condition. Especially since this back glass is an NOS back glass, uh, which I purchased on eBay. Uh, it's in really, really, really nice shape. It's almost, a, I would say, a 9.75 condition and uh, I got it shipped from a woman's who father used to be in the amusement business and she had it wrapped up in its original container so uh, paid a pretty penny for it but it's priceless you can't see them there are some around though also this play field on here is play field that uh, a really great guy uh, sent to me and uh, I cleaned this up and it came out phenomenal so this game is in really really nice shape too with its play feel and back glass and the cabinet's pretty good it has the original has the original design from the factory and uh, overall it's just a wonderful game so uh, this game, you drop nickels into, and uh, starts right up. I'm just throw some nickels in. I want to see if I can get that magic screen to uh, work for you. That's one of the greatest positions. Uh, features Valley ever produced. I mean, this Silver Sales is at the top of the list in most collectible bingos there are, with Golden Gate neck and neck and a few others. But the Magic Screen games, and this Magic Screen feature here in pink, you can see it says Magic Screen Positions. It has the letters there. This Magic Screen moves. It's on a chain which uh, you can you can press a button and it will move the chain and bring on other screens that are behind this big box here that this head consists of. So uh, we'll try to see if we can get just the screen to work because it's one of the like I said best features out there in the bingo. The game might be a little stingy might not give me the uh, magic screen, but if it does, we'll be able to uh, see it operate and uh, see how cool it is. But anyway, it's not lighting, so we're just going to shoot the balls out and uh, let the game end and time out. Because as you can hear, a lot of these bingos you can hear all the mechanical parts moving in them. They're pretty uh, filled up with uh, stepping switches and motors and 
you name it, they have it. So uh, we're just going to shoot the last ball out and move on to the next game. Because we don't want to spend too much time right now. We want you to get a little feel for some of these games and learn a little something about them. And uh, this way we can move on to... Uh, so there's a winner actually going up. 16 wins, how many? It's on the yellow, so it's 32. So just by shooting five balls out, I got lucky and I made a three in a line. Here you go, eight, 14, and three. That's a winner. This game will start paying you out winners when a player gets any three lights in a row, diagonally, vertically, or horizontally. So there's a winner. Paid me 32 gains because your payout, which is here for the yellow, 32, 96, and 200. Uh, these numbers are the payouts for three in a line, four in a line, and five in a line. Since we got three in a line, we're going to get 32 gains because the lower number, 32, is the three in a line payout. The 96 is a four in a line payout and 200 for five in a line. If we got the 12 and the 10, which are next to the 8, 14, and 3 that are lit, that would be five in a line. We would get 200 nickels. So, uh, interesting games. Uh, again, we don't want to get too hung up on them. We want to move down the line and get some more games in here. This uh, 1968 Lady Luck is uh, one of my favorite games William made in the late 60s. It actually plays like the real game of blackjack does. And uh, they do this by putting a dealer inside the game. There's the dealer card score. So there's a dealer in there and uh, there's the player's card score. So uh, you want to play for 21 or blackjack and uh, when you do that the game will the game will register a free play and a free ball that's the uh, big payout here on this game is to try to make 21 as you can see the last player had 14 that's not even close but when you get 21 in your player card score windows you need to let the ball down Stop playing the game, step away from flipping and everything, and hope that the ball goes directly down with the number 21 over there. If you do that, that's the way you get your free replay and free extra ball. Yeah, kind of strange, huh? This is a strange game when you think about what I just told you. You're going to be uh, removing yourself from playing the game in order to win... <laughs> The big payouts. Pretty cool though. It's hard to do, but when you do it, it's kind of cool. Anyway, this lady looks in pretty nice shape. I got this from a resident here in Clifton, New Jersey. I actually seen this game at a garage sale he was having, and uh, when I'm always there at garage sales, I ask about if anybody has any pinball machines for sale in their home. So. He said he had one, but he wasn't selling it, and I asked him, mind if I saw it? And he says, yeah, he let me down. I, I saw this thing in the house, and I, I couldn't believe the back glass was really, really nice. And he had it covered in blankets. The play feel on this is pretty, pretty, pretty nice. I don't know. I don't know if I've even seen a better one. And I've seen a lot of Lady Lux. They're out there. But this one in particular is really, really nice. And uh, this is a very cool game because the, you're playing pinball, but you're really trying to play blackjack too, which is cool. So if you like card games, you're a card player or something, this would be a terrific game for you to have in your home and play. Okay, we're going to move down now to the... just going to dim this light a little bit so we get a better look at this back glass. There we go. This uh, New Continental Golden. 
This is a, a six card game that was manufactured in Belgium. This game is in near perfect condition. I mean, it does look like it came out of the box. It's in really, really nice shape. As you can see, there's no painted design on this particular bingo that was manufactured in Belgium. And uh, they're really, really nice if you're into wood and you have a nice den or something and you have a nice wood furniture in there. Really, really nice. This game would look great in somebody's den who was into that wood look. But anyway, this game's not lit up, so let's let's light it up. As you can see, the number one is flashing. That means that the player can buy into a multiplier, but he has to put in anything he multiplies. He has to multiply out of his pocket and put in the game. So we're just going to keep it at one. The multiplier and as you can see we're putting this fifth card up the sixth card and uh, there's the seven red diagonals the eight red diagonals will move over ninth Susan B Anthony which this game accepts coins it's Susan B Anthony so it's a dollar a card here goes the tenth Susan B that's in and the eleventh it's eleven dollars 12, 13. So this bingo is all featured up and we spent quite a bit to get all these features lit. And as you can hear, the machine is very quiet. It's the opposite of all the electromechanical bingos that Bally made that have all big parts in them. And stepping switches and these electronic bingos are really really quiet which are nice you could stay up late and play them while the baby's sleeping or something I mean uh, so quiet if you're in an apartment you won't disturb any of your neighbors we'll see when this last ball is shot out how quiet they really are It's searching, searching through to see if we can collect any winners. And unfortunately, we didn't win anything. And we had 15 credits put in. But as you can see, you can buy an extra ball for $17, <laughs> or 17 quarters. I mean, 17 Susan B. Anthony's. Yeah, the bingo started out at a nickel a game. And, uh, because this game is in the 1990s, has progressed up in an amount of money that it needs to uh, operate. But anyway, you won't see them around anymore. They're not in, on router or actively being used out in the public. They're only in the uh, collections of people who grew up playing them as kids, and uh, they're just for show and fun and play. There's no uh, other way about it. Now here's a 1961 Bally Light Align Bingo. That's uh, one of my favorite. I grew up playing this game. And uh, it was on route in all the streets in the city of Newark. There were plenty of them out there. And uh, I finally found a nice one after searching for many years for one of these. This is the most simple six card game there is. Well I really shouldn't say that but it is very, it's one of the simplest and uh, compared to uh, the 1990 solid state bingo six card game and this 1961 they really didn't have any many features in it the only thing they had was this yellow line. 10, 18, 16, 14, 8. You can see there was a yellow line on every card. That they call the super line feature. And that would pay you... If you had a 3 in a line, it would pay you 4 in a line. 
and if you had a four in a line, it would pay you a five in the line. But uh, so hopefully, we can really just come back and do another video of all the games we've been talking about, a little more, more close up talk on them, and do some real good videos of each game individually so we can really explain them in detail and get all the information out there that's needed to know to play these great games. So here's the uh, Dixieland again. This uh, is another one of my favorite games that I played on route. Let's put that light back on for these electromechanical bingos. These two here are electromechanical. That's the solid state. This Dixieland 1978 I believe was the last Bally Bingo pinball machine that uh, was made in the EM style. I mean, uh, the EM stands for electromechanical. This was the last electromechanical game, six card game, that Bally ever made, and it's, it's sensational. This one's in really nice shape, too. I mean, uh, the back glass is near perfect. I don't think I can even find any imperfection. And the play field on these never wear. They're so nice. They're so rich in color and smooth. And This one's really, really nice. And the cabinet on this one's fairly nice, too, because, uh, you know, they were out operating back in the late 70s on their last days. And then they're out in the the general public, you know, they get scuffed up, they get brought back to the warehouses and tuned up and fixed and then brought back out on route. Uh, they get banged around because they're heavy and they're hard to move, so this one is in pretty nice shape. And uh, this is a, a game that is 11 coin maximum. You can only put in 11 coins in this game. And that's 11 quarters, so it's two dollars and seventy-five cents. If you were you can go back in a time capsule and go back in 1978 and play this in some establishment, <laughs> it would cost you two dollars and seventy-five cents to light up the whole back glass with every feature it gives you. So, uh, as you can see, there's a four and a line winner there. 10, 11, 5, 23, that's a 4 in a line. And then there's a 3 in a line on the 6th card. So there's a, three, a 4 in a line on the 3rd card, and a 3 in a line on the 6th card. I already collected for that. There's my credits. What I did was I just shot 5 balls out real quick just to light it up so that uh, we can film it, videotape it, and make it look nice. So. This uh, is a great player for sure. And here we go, 1963 William Skillpool, reverse wedge head. As you can see, that's a wedge head. If you look at the shape of the head on this Gottlieb wedge head, and then you look at this Williams reverse wedge head, you can see the difference. The top is more narrow and the bottom are more wide on these. And it's the opposite on these games. The top is wider than the bottom. But anyway, they're just nicknames for these games that everyone loves and knows. And this particular game came from Utah. I traded this game for a Gottlieb Centaur. Oh, no Gottlieb, I'm sorry. Just, uh, I guess that's a Valley Centaur. And uh, it's in pretty nice condition, but uh, not as nice as all the rest of my games. And uh, it plays really well, and it's a good player, so. And the play feels pretty nice, too. Back glass does have some issues, but uh, hey, it's a great game, and it's a. Uh, a game that I enjoy playing, so uh, really that's all that matters. And uh, 
the Dixieland I traded for a uh, I'm just going to backtrack here a little bit back down the line I traded for, uh, my Valley Gold Rush flipper game for this game which is pretty good trade for uh, me and it, hopefully it was a good trade for the other guy and uh, moving back here to the reverse wedge head this game you have to run, run racks of pool you have to roll over these little buttons and knock all them lights out on the balls all 15 and that will advance things throughout the game that will help the player enjoy the game even more and work his way to all kinds of specials special here special there special here you got these great kick out pockets you got two of them down here by the flippers which is really cool the ball kicks out out of these pockets and up into the play field very 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 good player all right this is a 1951 Bally Coney Island bingo um, Bally started manufacturing the bingos in 1951 after making a lot of one ball horse race games back in the 1940s so the Valley Bingos originated from these one ball horse race games that Valley made and they transitioned into making these bingos in 1951 and this particular game is very small in size and it's uh, the reason for that is it's the second bingo off the assembly line that Valley ever made the first one was a six card game actually similar glass to light line called bright lights which was the first game Valley made Bright Lights was and this Coney Island was the second one this game is really cool I love the whole theme about the game Coney Island is a great great amusement park back in its time and uh, this particular game is in nice condition for 1951 I mean uh, the graphics and the design of the cabinet are all there They're in really nice shape bright and colorful along with the play field which again most play fields on uh, the bingos if they games have been taken care of they're, they're, they're in really fantastic condition and this one is, is is like that it is really really nice the game probably wasn't on route long and got in the hands of some people that took care of it and uh, I got a call from one of the North Jersey collectors here that uh, lives in central New Jersey he's a friend of mine he turned me on to this game it was up somewhere in North Jersey way up North Jersey and I flew up there and purchased the game off a guy had it in his in his home really really nice game so uh, there you have it up oh, we're almost forgot we have to swing around now and go to the uh, other two games in the garage game room and do a little close-up on them too we're not going to do too much but we want to do a little bit of close-up on all the games as a follow-up of my last video so this game here is a Gottlieb Wedgehead called Abracadabra. As you can see, this 1975 Gottlieb Wedgehead is in sensational original condition. As are all the rest of my games. I have all original games that uh, are in my collection only two of them have painted cabinets and a reproduction back list and I'm working on that to get uh, my collection to all original games like this one here I have quite a few of these really low play beauties uh, this back list is near perfect uh, 
thanks to Steve Mayfair, who uh, through the years has been a great asset to this hobby with his uh, stock of NOS glasses. It's just a beauty. Thank you. Goes out to Steve. And uh, the game really deserved it. As you can see, the cabinet is just... Great on this. What you just heard was I was leaning and my hip hit this extra ball button on the Coney Island. And what it did was it lit up the last game that I played. And uh, it actually gave me the free ball, so I'm going to shoot it. I need the 9 5, the 4 in a line right there. So let's just shoot it out. I'm not going to be able to play the game because I'm taking this video. Here's the 9, maybe. But uh, that's what happened. So uh, let's get back to what we were talking about here with the abracadabra. I don't have much room here to showcase this game, but as you can see, this game's in great original condition. The legs are beautiful, original front door and coin plate. look great. I just noticed that my lights are out though on my coin plates. Hmm. Finally get to work on something. Anyway, this game uh, is very sought after by uh, a lot of Wedgehead collectors because you have artwork that matches the back glass and matches the play field, which was pretty good back then, 1975. Also, this is very sought after game because of playability. This game is a great player, for sure.